guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you exactly how we get those perfect POV shots from inside the car with binaural audio. But first, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You are really making this channel possible right now. Let's mute this wind chime first. This is just terrible. I'm quarantining at my parents' house. That hat works much better. So these are all the secrets of the Topher, Tedward, and Winding Road magazine. This is the equipment we use. It's very simple. You don't need a huge investment to do this. We're trying to use the best possible camera that's small enough to fit over our faces. Trust me, if I could put a DSLR on my face, I would. You need a GoPro. You're definitely gonna want something like a Hero 7 or a Hero 8. I, in fact, use Sony action cams up until very recently because they were the only ones with really good in-camera stabilization. This image quality and dynamic range on the Hero 7 has really changed the game and now the Hero 8 is even lighter. Next, we need to start talking about audio because the audio coming out of an action camera is not very professional and it's usable, but honestly, if you're looking for a more professional looking video, you're gonna have to use an external source. If you're a Winding Road Magazine fan, you've probably seen the words binaural audio 10,000 times and either overlooked it or actually know what it means. But basically what it means is you have two microphones. It's binaural. I have a microphone in each ear, which means that when you watch the video with headphones, you're actually getting a three-dimensional sound because, well, I don't know, it's not three-dimensional, it is three-dimensional because your brain is putting it together. Yeah, no quotes. But it means that if a truck passes me on the left, you hear it on the left. If something breaks in the car on the right, you hear it on the right. Hands down, the biggest mistake you're probably making if your POV doesn't look quite right is that instead of using a hat with one of these clips, you're using the headband that came with your GoPro accessories. And that's no good because here's the deal. When you do that, you're forced to put the GoPro way up here. That is not point of view. Your eyes are here and that makes all the difference. This is the reason why Winding Road Magazine looks a heck of a lot different than the POV that you'll see in regular car reviews. Love him, but that POV, it, it looks down. It's high up looking down instead of eye level looking forward. There are other methods. Some people use glasses that have cameras in them like the Snapchat glasses. And the problem with those is that the quality isn't that great and the field of view tends to be a little too large. GoPro on wide mode is the ideal setting. So let's talk about how to mount this and then we'll talk about settings. So you've got your hat, you've got your hat clip, and then on the hat clip, you have installed the GoPro cradle. Pop in the GoPro. And this is about when you're gonna realize that GoPros are cheap pieces of shit. I mean, seriously, GoPro doesn't even have a screw mount in it, so you can't just throw it on any mount ever. You have to use this piece of junk plastic. But anyway, I digress. Placement on your head is critical, and this is where wearing this hat isn't just tossing on a baseball hat. It's gotta be stable. So you've gotta wear this a little tighter than you would normally wear a hat. And you're gonna to toss it on like this. And you're gonna to wanna to tighten this down really tight because you don't want this hat moving around. This needs to be incredibly stable. And you'll notice I'm not wearing the hat flat. I'm actually wearing it up at a slight angle so that way I can get this camera to angle down just a little bit. If you wear it flat and this is pointed up a little bit, you're only going to see the top of the steering wheel. You wanna see below the logo. That's the ideal placement. And I do have this resting against the bridge of my nose. Now I have a pretty big nose, but luckily I can kind of sneak it in right at the top. So hopefully you can do the same. You shouldn't need to worry about this part of your nose. You can kind of stick it up there right there. And it shouldn't block your view. This should never obstruct your view. Now I can see it in my peripherals looking, uh, I guess that's not peripherals, is it? Inside, that's a peripheral still, right? That doesn't just mean out here. Well, anyway, you can still kind of detect that the camera is there and that is something that's really important. You should never do this if you are uncomfortable driving with the camera on your face. It's very awkward and it takes a little time to get used to. But rule number one, drive the car. If this stops you from driving the car or it makes you hesitate, looking back and forth for traffic, then don't do it. Don't do this at all. This is a very bad idea for you because you might get an accident and the dumbest possible excuse for your accident to your insurance company is, well, I was filming POV and it's all on camera and I'm a moron. And to add to the awkwardness, you're gonna put in these binaural audio microphones into your ears. So I'm the type of person where like, I don't even like wearing gloves because I hate that I lose that tactility in my hands. 
when you do this and you've got this, now you've lost a little bit of your own hearing because it's muffled. So it's kind of like holding your hands over your ears and driving like that. So again, take this step by step. If you're uncomfortable with the camera on your face, don't go and jump in with the binaural audio just yet. Get used to the camera and then insert these. Some people have no problem doing this. I don't know. I, I think I'm like, I don't like the lines in my socks. So, you know. Okay, let's talk settings. How do you wanna set up your GoPro? Well, typically you wanna be recording at about 60 frames per second, but it really has to do with what your artistic vision of this drive is. Because if you want the lines on the road to be whoosh, like really blurry, you wanna give a sensation of speed, you want the trees to kind of have that motion blur to it, then you're not gonna to wanna to shoot at 60 frames per second. You're gonna to wanna to shoot at like a, a 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And then you may even wanna lock in your shutter speed, so that way it's constant. But the danger there is that unless your lighting conditions are completely stable. As you can see right now, the sun keeps coming in and out with the clouds moving. The sun comes out, you're gonna be totally overexposed now and you might lose a bunch of footage. GoPro can compensate with that by changing the ISO, but if it goes beyond those limits, then you're kind of shit out of luck. We film in wide view. We do not film in super view. Super view looks very unnatural. It's way too wide. So it's kind of like that fisheye lens instead of something more natural that looks like how you would see it to the human eye. But most of the time I wanna have that shifter in the field of view. It looks a lot cooler when you're shifting and you can actually see the shifter. But the reality is if you were driving the car, you're not looking at the shifter. I mean, that's kind of weird, right? Now let's talk about the settings of your GoPro. So we shoot 1440 because 1440, it's a slightly longer, narrower picture. Then when we get to post, we zoom in on it and raise it up. So that way you don't have the, the roof line in the shot, you just get the steering wheel. And if you don't do this, a lot of times you lose a little bit of that steering wheel and suddenly the emblem is too low and now you're just looking at the top of the wheel. And that's not a huge deal, but it doesn't look as good. Low light on auto, stabilization on auto. Stabilization is the only reason you bought this camera except for the dynamic range. And that's why we use GoPro. That's why I stopped using my Sony's. Even though GoPro is pretty much garbage because it has a short battery life, the cameras are made cheaply, the screens crack. Like honestly, as a thing, a GoPro is a piece of garbage. However, it has the best dynamic range, meaning that when I'm driving a car, I can see both the dark dashboard and the light outside of the windshield at the same time. If you use any other action camera, it's gonna blow out the outside world if it's sunny out just to get an exposure on the dashboard. But GoPro managed to figure out the dynamic range. So for the most part, in most conditions, you can see everything outside and inside the car. Ideally, you have a nice bright, you know, tan leather interior and a cloudy day outside. That's the perfect ideal conditions. And this is a video, it's your art, it's your creation. And that stupid hat fell off the wind chime again. But remember, you can do this any way you want to. You don't have to do it this way. But the biggest mistake that I can help you correct is the angle and the actual point of view. Because this, even though you look like an idiot driving down the street with it, it's a lot better than having that camera way up on top of your head pointing down. That's unnatural and it doesn't look right. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope you either learned something if you were trying to do point of view video or you were just curious how we shoot it. When you're done in post, all you're gonna do is take the audio from your Zoom and sync it up with the video on your GoPro. And if we go on a real deep dive, the time clock on these audio recorders is slightly different than the time clock on a GoPro. So if you do a very long shoot, let's say 20 minutes, it will start to lose sync over time. You're actually gonna have to stretch out that audio.